Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see uh, everyone here, and uh, hope your summer is going well. You know, this summer, I was honored to be sworn in again as your Minister of Finance. It's an honor, and it's a privilege. And I will work every day to live up to the faith that the Premier and the people of Ontario have placed in me. In April, our government put forward an ambitious plan, a plan to build Ontario, a plan for better jobs and bigger paychecks by rebuilding our economy and working for workers, a plan to keep costs down for families and seniors by putting more money back into their pockets, a plan to build key infrastructure by getting shovels in the ground on subways, housing, and highways, including Highway 413 and the Bradford Bypass. A plan to stay open by investing in hospitals, home care, and our health care workforce. A plan to make sure students and workers have the skills and, they, and the supports they need to succeed. And this plan came with a promise. A promise that, under the leadership of Premier Ford, we will get it done. Today, I introduced the reintroduced the Plan to Build Act in the Legislature. And now I'm going to provide some updates on our plan, including how this government will continue to be there to support parents, to support students, and to support some of the most vulnerable in our community. From rent to groceries, we know families are feeling the impact of rising prices. That is why we are building on our plan by putting more money into the pockets of those who need it most. C'est pourquoi nous bonifions notre plan en mettant plus d'argent dans les poches des personnes qui en ont le plus besoin. To help those who qualify for disability support, we are delivering on our commitment to increase Ontario, the Ontario Disability Support Program rates by 5% beginning in September of 2022 and adjusting future increases to ODSP rates based on inflation. And beginning in September, the Assistance for Children and with Severe Disabilities Program maximum monthly amount will also be increased by 5%. This is just one of the many ways our government is providing support to those who need it most, including coverage for prescription drugs, vision care and dental care, as well as dietary expenses related to a medical condition and other supports, and significant funding provided to municipalities and Indigenous community partners to help them deliver critical services, create long-term housing solutions, and keep people safe. We also know the COVID-19 pandemic has been hard on kids, parents, and guardians, as students learn from home to help slow the spread of the virus. But our government has a plan for students to catch up, to help fill gaps in learning for students after two years of pandemic disruptions, we are investing $225 million for direct payments to parents. This is in addition to the previously announced $175 million tuition support program. And we will have more details in the year on how families can access this new support. Finally, the economic situation has changed since we first released our 2022 budget in the spring. Inflation has hit levels not seen in four decades. While supply, supply chain bottlenecks and geopolitical conflict has contributed to economic certainty worldwide, uncertainty, from day one, our government has been transparent and accountable to the people of Ontario. And every quarter, we have dutifully reported back on the state of the province's books and the state of the economy, which is why I'm here this afternoon to share our latest outlook based on Ontario's 2022-2023 first quarter finances. While our economy remains resilient, real GDP growth expectations in 2022 have declined slightly since the budget, and expectations for nominal GDP growth have risen, reflecting inflation. This has resulted in higher than expected and forecasted tax revenue. Now faced with global economic uncertainty, Responsible fiscal management is needed now more than ever. That is why we are taking the prudent step to improve the province's fiscal outlook by using higher than expected projected revenues to reduce the deficit. 
We are now projecting an improved fiscal outlook since the 2022 budget, including a $1.1 billion improvement to the deficit projection for 2022-23. Nous prévoyons maintenant des perspectives financières plus optimistes depuis le budget de 2022 dont une amélioration de 1,1 milliard de dollars du DFSI prévu pour 2022-23. Our responsible fiscal management over the course of the pandemic has served us well. And my job as finance minister is to balance our prudent and responsible approach to the province's finances with making the investments in health care, infrastructure and skills and the training that will help build a stronger Ontario. In the face of global uncertainty, workers, families and seniors are worried about their finances and about the future, and I understand that. But the people can, of Ontario can be rest assured that this government, led by Premier Ford, has their back. And in uncertain times, you need a plan. A plan that is prudent, flexible and focused on the long term. A plan to rebuild our economy with better jobs and bigger paychecks. A plan that works for workers and puts money back into the po pockets of families and seniors. A plan for building the highways, subways and housing. A plan to recruit and support nurses and frontline health care workers to deliver patient care and keep our economy open. And a plan for education and skills training that will give everyone the opportunity to help us build Ontario. Le plan de l'Ontario pour bâtir prépare un avenir que la population de l'Ontario to envisage with confidence and fierté. Ontario's plan to build is the blueprint for a future the people of the province can look forward to with confidence and pride. Together, let's build Ontario. And before questions, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who played a role in the budget, especially the hard-working staff at the Ministry of Finance and my team in the Minister's office. There were many late nights and weekends, but we could not have got it done without you. So, merci, thank you, and with that, I will take questions. Minister, was, Minister, there, any the to, Minister, was there any thought to uh, using that $1.1 billion in found money, I guess it was, due to the increased, increased revenues, and putting that back into, into health care? I mean, there's, you, you've seen the ER crisis this summer. Why didn't you take that $1.1 billion? You could still have a $19.9 .9 billion deficit, whether it's 18.8 .8 or 19.9, .9, it's still huge, and, 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 and just alleviate the crisis right away. Well, I think it's important that we have a, a, a prudent and flexible plan going forward, and uh, we've done that uh, in, this, uh, in this budget. Uh, we're making uh, investments, as you have noted and others have noted, significant investments in health care, in education. We've been very transparent about our plan to build Ontario with those investments, some $178 billion of investments, which is a significant amount of investment. So uh, I think the prudent thing to do, given the economic uncertainty, given the investments that we're making to protect people, to build our critical infrastructure, support uh, the human resources, to w support workers and make sure they have the skills and training uh, for the infrastructure that we're building, is the wise and prudent thing to do. Minister, on the ODSP raise, could, could you live on 1200 bucks a month? You know, we, uh, we made a commitment uh, that we would address ODSP. We made a commitment uh, through the campaign. We're delivering on that commi commitment. We're doing, we're doing what we said we would do. Uh, we're adjusting it also for inflation. The question is, uh, Minister, do you think you would have a, a good life on, on 1200 bucks a month? The question is, what can we do for the people of Ontario that are the most vulnerable? This is a step in the right direction. Uh, this is a direction of adjusting it to inflation, in addition to the multiple uh, pro uh, programs and services that we have to support the more uh, vulnerable. I would highlight that we also that we also included in in uh, in the budget that we've retabled the promise that we said we would keep i faced you folks uh, just a few months ago saying this is the budget that i would take to the people of ontario this is the budget that uh, the people of ontario voted on and it's the one we've retabled that we uh, we also included in that budget 127 million which is the fifth round of social services relief for the most vulnerable, including many on ODSP, to provide supportive housing. So I think this is uh, just one thing that we're doing to make sure that we help those most vulnerable in society. 
But Minister, 5% is like $58 a month for an adult who only has $1,169 per month to live on. They, they have a, an ODSP diet, tips to have one baked potato a day with no butter, to drink a lot of caffeine for an appetite suppressant. I mean, people are not thriving or surviving even on ODSP, so how can you justify only adding 58 bucks a month? Well, listen, I understand that the environment is difficult and challenging, and that's why we made a commitment to increase it by 5 percent. That's why we made a commitment to adjust it to inflation. We're one of three provinces, only three provinces, that are doing that. So we're taking action. Of course, we'll continue to monitor the environment that we're in. As I said, as I just said, we have a lot of supports, whether it be housing, vision care, dental care. You mentioned diet. We have the health care supports. We have a range of supports. Can we always do more? Absolutely. That's what we're here in government to do. This is the thing that we said we would do. This is what the people of Ontario voted us to one, do. One more question, though, on it, if I may. And you know, you you gave people a rebate on license plate stickers. We don't have to pay 120 bucks or whatever it was anymore. That's costing the coffers a billion dollars a year. Don't you think that billion dollars a year could actually help people like those on ODSP more than you know the average person who yeah 140 bucks is nice a year but it's 14 bucks a month it's not that much right? No, listen, I, I understand the environment for a number of Ontarians are in, uh, and so that's why we're doing a bunch of things. Not only the ODSP, which you've raised before and others have raised, and we listened and we made that commitment, and here we, I'm standing here delivering on that commitment. But we raised, for example, for those who can work, the minimum wage. We reduced the tax that people pay up to 50000 So for lower-income workers, we reduced the tax. We introduced tax credits to help our seniors age at home longer, to provide care at home. We provide a jobs training tax credit. We're helping through a range of, of, uh, of programs and services to, to help many, uh, many Ontarians who uh, need help in their day-to-day -day lives. Minister, can you tell us why parents are getting another direct payment? Inflation's hurting everybody. Why not give everyone a direct payment? Why not give the nurses who have been working so hard a direct payment? Why are parents getting more money here? Well, we gave nurses a direct payment of 5000 which is happening right now, which is almost 8% increase. Uh, look, the uh, COVID was uh, tough on many people in Ontario, but uh, certainly for many parents and for the children in school, it was very tough. And uh, so the two years uh, of which some points they spent not in school, uh, we want to provide uh, additional supports to help them catch up. We have a plan to catch up, uh, and uh, the minister has highlighted the elements of that plan. And look, we're, we're, we announced uh, before the $175 million, which is going through to helping some 50,000 students as we speak get the tutoring supports they need to catch up. This is in addition to that, so that uh, parents who know their children best can provide the tutoring type support and in the areas that they need. And we'll have more to say on that. But today we're announcing that there's more funding to come to help the children and support the parents. Something new uh, to tackle the health care crisis, something new to tackle inflation in this budget. Both those issues have changed dramatically from the spring, Minister. Well, we've been doing a lot of things. Of course, there's always more to do. There's no question. And I will continue to monitor the economic environment that we're in. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. Uh, with regard to uh, the costs that many uh, Ontarians are facing, whether it was at the pumps or groceries or rent that was uh, talked about uh, and for, for people on ODSP, we continue to look at all the options. Of course, we provided some gas tax relief for six months that um, that uh, I think has come in handy. We, we've uh, reduced the uh, validation sticker fee. That's uh, $120 per car. Um, and we gave the rebate that we're looking at ways to uh, to help uh, Ontarians uh, get through this period of, of challenging times. And, and we understand that, and I understand that, and that's why we'll continue to monitor the situation and continue to take the action necessary to help Ontarians. Minister, just in terms of that, how much money does each parent get? How, what, 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 is the, what is this payment for, for my kids' tutoring? How much money, how much do I get for You know, that's to be determined, Jeff. Uh, you know, what uh, was important today was to announce that more support is coming to help parents with their children's education on top of the significant investments in education. By the way, I'm sure many of you have read the 241 pages in, in the budget, but uh, what was in there as well was over $3 billion of additional support for education. Uh, so I, I, I will answer your question with regard to uh, the 
for, for the two million students. But you know, we've we've put in over three billion dollars of indes additional investments for education, uh, billion over a billion for childcare, the ten dollar a day childcare for next year, additional supports. Uh, and through COVID funding to make sure that our schools are safe and can stay open, we, be it through HEPA filters, through cleaning. Additional funding for mental health because it's been a challenging time for our children. Additional help for, in this case, tutoring. Uh, we'll have more details to say with regard to how we're going to roll out that program. But let me tell you this, we're going to listen to parents. We're going to listen to uh, many people to say what's the best way we can deliver and, and deliver the right type of uh, funding to support parents who know their children best. Just doing the basic math, it, it's a pittance if you look at what tutoring costs, and you're going to give it to parents regardless of their income. Every every parent. We haven't uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, put out the details of this plan. Well, why, why not put that money into the education system I'm already paying for to have my children catch up on their learning? Well, we have the first education? phase, which is the 175 million, which is already helping through the school boards. Is already helping over 50,000 students catch up. Uh, that money is available. It is flowing. It's helping. Uh, I had uh, a woman, uh, a parent, tell me this morning that uh, you know she had, you know, she wasn't aware of that program. We've got to make sure people, you know, at you know, who have children in school who need those supports are aware of those supports. The school boards, the schools have to deliver that out. Uh, so I, I met another uh, parent who whose child has really benefited from tutoring supports. So, you know, we have to do more, there's no question, and this is in part the 225 additional million is to continue that plan going forward. Will these payments be going to all parents, or will they have to prove that it's going toward tutoring? Well, like I said, the timing and the details will be forthcoming, so stay tuned on doesn't that. This, doesn't this undermine the education system, though, by taking money directly away from the education system and then giving it to parents for uh, private tutoring? I, uh, to Jeff's point, we all pay into a public education system, yourself included. Wouldn't you want to see that strengthened for, for children? Well, we're doing a lot of things to help parents in strengthening that system and the publicly funded system. This is continuing to support in addition to that. Well, I just highlighted a bunch of things uh, that we've done. Uh, the, the child care plan to help families uh, with child care, the plan to help with mental health, helping these are children who need to be in school. The best place for our children is to be in school. There's been challenges with regard to physical activity, academic activity, social activity, uh, a range of extracurricular activity that's, I think, important. And what this builds on is to make sure that we find ways to make sure the students who need to get the supports necessary for tutoring additional, and in this case, to use parents who know their children best to be able to administer that. And we'll have more details on that in the near term. I wanted to ask about the Financial Accountability Officer. They had, uh, the, the FAO had um, found $1.8 billion in the health care system that was not spent. I know you're going to say it's just a snapshot in time, but he says his numbers are as of late April, uh, and, and his numbers are the most accurate of what the government actually spent in the last fiscal year. So can you tell us what happened to that $1.8 billion or the $7 billion in total that the government underspent, and where does that money go? You know, uh, I, I appreciate the work that the Financial Accountability Officer does, uh, but you, you said it, Colin. On March 28th, he came out with his report, It's a Point in Time, uh, and uh, we, we come out... Sorry, his report came out after the election, his numbers are based out of, of late April. So, so, so the financial, are, I will repeat, the financial accountability officer's numbers are not the audited numbers. The financial accountability officer has access uh, to a point in time information, does not have access to all the expenditures because they happen sometimes after uh, that uh, his report comes out. What I can say is that this, we've made significant investments in health care. It's right here in the document. And I'm sure, Colin, you too have read all 241 pages. There's great things in here. It's significant investments in, in education. We have a plan to build. I've delivered on the commitment that I said to the people of Ontario that we would run on this budget and that they would vote on this budget. And so You're saying that every single cent that the Ford government has allocated to health care has been spent. There's no money left on the table that was underspent. Uh, Colin, what I'm saying is uh, we come out here every 90 days with the numbers and we stand before you. We stand once a year with the public accounts before you. We come out with the budget 
once a year and a fall economic statement once a year and outline each of their quarterly finances. Those are the numbers of Ontario. Uh, those are the numbers uh, and, and record investments. As your no, colleagues have pointed out, record you're investments. Saying, Minister, that there's no money left in the table. Every cent has been spent. I just want to get that clear. Every spend, cent in the health care budget has been spent. You know, I think what's important, I think the important thing is we're putting significant investments out there. My job is to make sure that those investments are transparent in this document, to make sure that we have adequate funding for our hospitals, for our long-term care facilities, for health human resources, for our schools. That's my job. The money gets spent by each minister, and then we account for it all through the Auditor General, through the public accounts, through the quarterly we report, often with estimates, just like our revenue forecast right now, our estimates for Q1. That's basic accounting, and that's what we stand behind. And I think the transparency and accountability is absolutely critical for the people of Ontario, and that's what I'll stand behind. Minister, it says here that uh, in the speech from the throne, the road ahead will not always be easy. Is that a warning to people in Ontario that austerity measures are coming, that there's going to be some belt tightening? No, that's a, that's a message that we live in very uncertain economic times. You know, but what does that mean for, for spending and, and are you going to have to rein it in? And what does it mean for upcoming contracts? I mean, well, I think, you know, I've been um, in the private sector for over 30 years and now in government over five years. And uh, what I know is critical, you can never know what's around the corner, but make sure you have a plan. Make sure you communicate that plan very effectively. And that's what we've done in our budget. That's what we've been very transparent is uh, that, that we've been on. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in the Russian-Ukraine uh, situation. I don't know what's going to happen overseas. But what I do know is I have a lot of confidence in the Ontario economy. I have a lot of a confidence in our plan to build Ontario, not only the short term but the long term, that, uh, that in uncertain economic times it's important to have a plan. And, you know, to be transparent about that plan. You know, I keep saying 241 pages. I mean, this is putting a document out there and saying, okay, uh, we either like your plan or we don't like your plan. In this case, the promise that we made to the people of Ontario, if elected, was to retable this plan. I kept that promise. And, and uh, it was roundly supported by, by the electorate. How do you say that you are, are not going to have, that there aren't going to be cuts, that there aren't going to be tax increases if you don't know what's coming around the corner? The, the, well, that's why you have contingencies, for example. That, uh, within the plan, we have significant contingencies built in uh, throughout uh, the next number of years. We have forecasts and scenarios, uh, you know, a faster growth, a slower growth scenario. Um, what's important is to, to uh, a couple of things. One is to have a plan. Uh, to be able to, to deal with the environment that we're in, uh, to have uh, make the investments so that, uh, like a, a, the critical infrastructure, to build the healthcare system, to support the uh, human resources, uh, to build highways, to move people. We're going to get a million people uh, uh, every five years into this province. They're going to want to. Some of them are going to want to take a subway. Some of them are going to drive. Some of them want to want to. Uh, will need healthcare. Some will need to go to schools. You know, so on and so forth. We got to make sure. Through this plan, I think a very responsible plan that the that we promised that we would uh, we would table, and here we, here I am. I kept that promise, and a plan that uh, we're implementing. So uh, that's what I've learned in many years of business, and that's and and to be transparent about it, stand in front of you and the people of Ontario to say this is what we plan to do. We have time for one more question. I don't understand why the government seems to have such a hard pro hard time spending money on ODSP. You guys had to be shamed into doing the 5%, and now it's still going to be not enough to live on, and you're tying it to inflation, so it'll always be not enough to live on. It'll just continue to be, uh, it'll rise with inflation, but prices will go up, and it's just not gonna be enough to live on. Like, Is there an ideological thing going on? Can you give us an idea of what's happening inside the caucus when you talk about this? Is it just that you don't believe that ODSP recipients are like we're throwing a lot of money at, but giving people license plate rebates is? Look, uh, I understand the situation that many Ontarians are facing, including those on disability. Uh, and, uh, and, and so that's why we made a commitment in the campaign to make a, an increase in ODS payments by 5%. Why we made a commitment to adjust it based on inflation. And we're, I'm standing here delivering on that commitment. I talked about the other things that we're doing. Is there more to do? There is more to do on so many fronts that we, we, we are doing it. With respect, are, are with respect, we are. And we went to the people of Ontario and they endorsed it. Are you aware of a cyber you. attack on the Ontario Canada okay. store?
Listen, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.